Hey guys, Lewis here, and today we're going to have a look at Film Convert Nitrate. And if you're already a Film Convert user, do you need to upgrade? It's 2020. Film Convert is no longer a new tool on the market. It's now part of many filmmakers' digital toolbox, and unlike a LUT or a color preset, Film Convert is more scientific in how it approaches the color transformation of your image. First, it will use the exact color science behind the listed film stocks, and it will apply them based on your camera's data. Now I'm currently using the legacy version of Film Convert and this is how it would operate within Resolve. In the color page, you simply add the OFX plugin to an empty node and you would select the camera model so we can correctly apply the film profile. At first, if your camera profile is not installed, that needs to be downloaded. But after that, select the make and model and hit apply. Now before we would apply the film stock, uh, the camera profile may have thrown the exposure and temperature off balance a little bit. And we have two primary sliders that will quickly adjust these. And then of course, the main draw of the plugin is the film profiles. And we have a healthy dose of cinema film stocks and still film profiles. There's not everything in this list is used in filmmaking, by the way. Uh, but you would select the stock and it is applied to the image. Size is the size of the hypothetical film. So of course, the larger the celluloid film, the more clarity the image has. That's why many directors seek to shoot blockbusters on IMAX at 70 millimeter. So 35 millimeter frame, we're gonna have a nice crisp image with lots of detail and clarity. Meanwhile, eight millimeter, which is a lot smaller, is gonna have less clarity and we'll also have more visible grain. And we can see that's been incorporated when I switch size. Beneath that, we have three adjustable parameters for the film profile, the color, the curve, and the grain. The color will control the amount of color from the film profile that is applied, However, the color slider will also determine how much of the curve is applied, whereas the curve will only control the intensity of the curve. And the curve is essentially a contrast curve unique to that film profile you have chosen. Some film stocks will have more contrast than others. Next, the grain slider will dictate how much of the generated grain is included in the image. Now, I don't use Film Convert for every project, but when I do, I'm primarily using these tools. They're basic, concise. And underneath the preliminary film settings, we have color correction, and guys, honestly, in Resolve, if I'm going to color correct, it's going to be over here on the primary wheels, as it's not only more proficient, but I don't necessarily enjoy using sliders to dictate color changes. The thing is with Film Convert is that I guess you could say I never use it as a standalone plugin or a standalone tool. I use it to finesse my footage and add that film-like texture if required. For example, if I open up my gallery and bring in this before grade, you can see here that I have other nodes. I've made my initial corrections to the color exposure, stabilized the shadows and so forth. Then I've added Film Convert on the end. Is this simply because I find better results using Film Convert in this manner? Or is it because I feel like Film Convert doesn't allow me to control my image in the way that I would like to, especially because I use a lot of log and raw footage? Well, let's jump over to Nitrate and see what's different. So instantly we can see that the UI has changed. On our viewing monitor, we have an overlay, which we're just gonna turn off for the time being. And this is turned off by selecting or deselecting the OFX overlay. Now in the open effects panel, we can also see a few visual adjustments to the layout here. It's more condensed and organized. The saturation has been brought up to the camera settings area. And we also have a tint parameter too. I'm just gonna quickly jump over the film settings because we have an entirely new adjustment area for the grain. You can still adjust the film size, but you now have the individual settings to tweak the grain as you see fit. Personally, I would probably leave this as is. However, if you needed to increase the softness of the grain for a desired fact, say, but keep the size of the 35 millimeter profile, now you can do so. So let's jump to the film settings and primarily talk about what is different with Nitrate. And that is, it supports a Cineon Log workflow. Now this does two things. The first meaning that Nitrate will process the changes in log without clipping or crushing the information. This is the big thing. This is the selling point of the upgrade. Now, for example, I'm gonna bring up the overlay again. And if I was to adjust the shadows, as it's being processed as a log correction, only the shadows are being manipulated. Whereas if we jump to the previous clip with the legacy plugin and raise the lift, which isn't the same, is raising the shadows, even though it does say shadows here. We can see that we're not raising the shadows, so to speak, but just the dark region of the image. And make sure you pay attention to the scopes. As you can see that we're just decreasing the contrast ratio, so to speak, and making the image milky. Whereas with nitrate, while we're decreasing the contrast ratio too, it's correctly adjusting the density of the shadows. And this is the same with the highlights and the midtones. 
with the legacy version of the plugin it was destructive, not in the sense that it would ruin your footage, but that the data would be clipped, and that's why I would always use it on the final node of my grid structure and make my exposure adjustments beforehand because Film Convert couldn't correctly digest the info. Likewise, with the Cineon Log process, it also means we're going to be able to reduce the contrast or saturation of the film stock while keeping the authentic colours of the profiles throughout. So to come back to the legacy plugin, I mentioned I wasn't much of a fan of using the sliders to dictate colour manipulations, so I would just use the colour wheels down here anyway. Well, if we jump to the OpenFX overlay and expand it, you can now see we have a Film Convert interface with these colour wheels. So again, it will allow you to solely remain within the Film Convert node to play around with the colours if you're not ready to move on you know, into all this and that. It's now here too. Interestingly, uh, up in this overlay, they also have a grain curve, which is separate to these controls here. And this curve will change how much grain is applied to a given region. If you think, hmm, you know, I was shooting with a high ISO, my shadows are already quite noisy. I don't want to make it worse by applying grain, but I need that film convert color. Then you can just bring down the shadows and it will reduce the grain only within that region. Alternatively, perhaps for a creative effect, you just need the grain to appear more predominantly within the highlights, or you can just bump up the highlight curve and it will do so. So yeah, very, very powerful. I'm not overly fond of having this overlay within the viewing monitor, but I imagine there might have been some resistance with having the color wheels appear within the setting panels, but you are able to change the size of the overlay. So what are my overall thoughts of this upgrade? Well, I was never against Film Convert to start with, I've used the software, or the plugin I should say, for a number of years. But as initially stated, I would tend to use it as an icing on the cake kind of layer, and sometimes I might even turn the node key down to 50% so the plugin wouldn't completely overpower my footage. And I think this was mostly down to the fact that 90% of the footage I work with is either raw or log footage. So I'd never use this plugin by itself because it would clip that data. However, I think overall the update, or upgrade for better words, has allowed more creative control within the single application. I don't know if I would solely use the plugin without any other form of correction or grading on the other nodes, but now it certainly is possible. I think for those who are unfamiliar with the color grading process and just, you know, you're looking for a quick fix, I guess you could say. It certainly allows you to obtain great results without the need of fully understanding the Resolve's interface and workflow. So yeah, I am going to recommend uh, upgrading if you are a owner of the legacy version of the plugin, um, especially just for this capability with uh, the log format. So, and uh, I'll catch you guys next time.